are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sing to God's glory.
said son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work who lives and reigns in you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Let's be seated to hear God's word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter saw the wonder and amazement caused by his healing of the lame man, he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by your own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given over to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has, been made, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you have acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the first day of the week, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. Oh, excuse me. That's the wrong gospel. <laughs> this one's according to John. Wait, no, it's not. No, that's the, yeah, that's the right gospel. <laughs> On the first day of the week, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, 
It is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? In that same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. And they were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been no made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, the Lord Christ. speak to you in the name of one God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, just when you feel like you've got things figured out for a while, isn't it the case that you often get thrown for a loop? Just, just now. I was reminded of that. Um, by the second epistle from John, or the Johannine community. Aren't we blessed to be children of God? To be an adult <coughs> is a good thing. To be an adult is to be responsible for ourselves and responsible to others. To be an adult means that we're accountable for what we've done. To be an adult means that we take some share and care in our community. But often, we think that to be an adult is to be independent, solo. Or we think that to be an adult is to need no one else. Or that to be an adult means that you've got it all figured out. And blessed are they who remember that they're in fact children of God, children of God. It's great if you have the Ten Commandments memorized. It's great if you have 
passages, passages of scripture memorized, it's great. If you've been studying, it's great. If you feel secure in your faith, trust in God, that's great. The danger is becoming a little too adult about our faith, a little too independent, thinking we've got it all figured out already. We can coast from here till the kingdom comes back. To be a child before God is to be open, receptive, ready to learn anew, ready to relearn what you thought was true, what you had figured out for yourself. To be a child of God is to be receptive to God's love, receptive to how God is raising us as his children, even if we're his 80-something-year-old children. So my question for you to consider this week, are you an adult before God? Are you a child before God? Amen? Standing together. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for Beth, Cheryl, Nancy, Barbara, Anne, Margaret, Robert, Janice, Nancy, Tom, Anthony, Kim, Jamar, Lou Ann, Jay, Suzanne, Grant, the Rodriguez family, Pat, Millie, and Irv, Grace, Becky, Ophelia, Matisse, Michael, and for the needs we bring to you now, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer, and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are accepted through the Spirit, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. be seated. First, you may have noticed on the way in, uh, we used to have a double sign, uh, the new sign in front of the old sign, and then we had the new sign in front of the posts for the old sign, and now we just have the new sign and a pile of dirt. <laughs> so, thank you so much. Thank you to those who came by yesterday afternoon to pull up those posts. I understand that it took quite a bit more time and was hoped for, <laughs> and uh, you are blessed in your struggles. Uh, I also want to announce that the uh, reception after today's service will be in the parish hall so that we don't have a dusted seasoning of pollen on all of our food. You can just see it falling out there. Uh, Sunday school this week will not meet in the narthex. It will meet in the choir loft uh, because the Sunday school will have a tour of the, of the organ. And if there is anyone else who would like to be a child today and would like a tour of the organ, you're also welcome uh, in the choir loft. Uh, morning prayer and Bible study continue. Morning prayer at 9 a.m. on Wednesdays in the Lawrence Room. Bible study, uh, it's not two sessions of one class. It's two separate classes, just in case that's intimidating to you. So the, the one session is at 5.30 on Monday. Mondays, the other is at... Wednesday at 9.30 after morning prayer, and both in the Lawrence Room. Uh, you might have seen the UTO box in the back. Uh, 
It is UTO Day, United Thank Offering. Uh, you might have also grabbed an envelope that, from the little stack back there. Uh, if you do place an offering in the plate that you intend to go to UTO, make sure you write in the memo line that you'd like to, to go to, to the United Thank Offering. Or on the way out, you can always just put a donation in the box uh, if you'd like to give to the United <coughs> Thank Offering. More information on that is in your uh, uh, announcements flyer. And I'd also like to thank and recognize our new trustees. And could you both please stand to be acknowledged, Mark Ferguson and Alan McLeod. Thank you so much. We have heard back from the, the county court that you are accepted. So thank you. <laughs> Uh, there is a prayer and planning session for the youth group and youth activities uh, next Sunday at 3 p.m. It'll be a cookout at the Ferguson. Hmm? Five. At 5 p.m. Don't, don't read what's written here. At 5 p.m. at the Ferguson's house, ho hosted by the Ferguson's and uh, Matthew Lusk. Yes, your dad. <laughs> your very own dad. <laughs> You'll notice in the pictures here that the bees are back, which is great. Don't get too close. <laughs> uh, are there any other announcements for the good of the parish? One more. Oh, there's two more. Let's start here. Go ahead. Uh, just so you all know, we have the education committee uh, with the help of Emily Wigglesworth, Cheryl Cattery, and many others. We have been going through the library in the Lawrence group, and all of the books that we are looking to donate are displayed Great, thank you. Uh, so, <coughs> in case you didn't hear that, there are books in the parish hall. Take them, uh, donate them, and if whatever is left behind, we'll be donating to whomever. Uh, second in Charles or something. And another. <coughs> Announcements. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
give thanks to the Lord our God. to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature <coughs> under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. <laughs> reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yes, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, to the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, 
recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember, Mark, our bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light and grant that we may find our inheritance with the blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, blessed Damien, blessed Peter and Anna Kasser, blessed Juan Inez de la Cruz, blessed Alphage, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Now, as our Savior taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and glory forever and ever. Amen.
Let us stand and pray. <coughs> Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us in the spiritual food of the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people, forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Bow your heads for God's blessing. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God, Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.